Hey, what's going on guys? Today is the day that Chapter 2 Season 1 finally got launched and it brought with it a bunch of awesome changes for creative mode. So let's jump into all of the exciting changes that were made. All right guys, so the first thing that you're gonna notice when you load up creative mode is this brand new hub. So this was actually a player designed creation by Maka Makes. And with the new update, Epic Games has now announced this new way of being featured in game, and that is the featured hub. So the featured hub is basically a community made creation that allows you to design your own creative hub. So I was invited down to Epic Games last month for three weeks to be able to work on this project with six other creators. And while we're there, we got the opportunity to test out season 11 early and all of the features that are in creative mode and we also got the opportunity to be some of the first people to be featured in game with this new featured hub. So you guys will also have the opportunity to be able to make your own featured hubs in the future. So to be able to make your own hub and have it featured in game, the first thing you need to do is go over to your rift island and you need to go to create new template islands and then you need to select the hub template tutorial. You can then name your hub whatever you want and then it will create this island. So there's a couple of game settings and rules that you need to follow when you're creating custom hubs. This is to make sure that all of the hubs have the same settings and to make sure that the featured hub doesn't detract from the player experience. Some of the basic rules that you'll need to follow when creating your own featured hubs is to use 35,000 memory or less, have no devices that can damage or eliminate players. You should also make sure that you don't put props that block the view of any of the rifts. When you spawn into the island, it should be immediately clear where the player rifts are, so that it doesn't take a long time to get to them. You should also make sure that you limit the use of any particle effects or transparent layers. That's to make sure that it performs well on things like the Nintendo Switch and also mobile. You should also make sure that the gravity isn't set to completely crazy settings so that it makes it really difficult to reach the rifts. You should also not have any like consumable items or anything like that because if you had consumable items in the hub then people could collect these and then go into other people's featured islands or other people's levels and potentially break them. You should also make sure to have no vehicles in the hub. If you have any easter eggs in your levels then you need to make sure that you report them to Epic first. That's to make sure that anything that you put in the hub doesn't go against Epic's content policy. You should also make sure that there's no copyrighted material in the hub. You can shout out other players or communities or teams or anything like that. So if you're in a build team and you want to shout out your teammates, then you can do that in the hub. There's no problems with that. You're also not allowed to link your socials or anything like that. So don't go putting your Discord server link in there or like your YouTube or your Twitch or your Twitter or anything like that. That will all get denied and it will stop your hub from being chosen. But apart from those rules, this is the default hub that you'll start with. Everything is pretty self-explanatory. You've got the playground rifts at the back and then you've got the featured rifts at the front. Anywhere inside this red force field zone is where the players will spawn when they load into playgrounds and creative. You can build one tile up from here and they'll still spawn okay. Just make sure that you don't go too detail heavy in this area because it might block player spawns and you might have people spawning inside trees and stuff like that. So it's best to leave this area inside the force field as clear as possible, but you can decide whether or not you wanna raise this whole section up by one tile or leave it flat like this. I personally love the way that this island looks and I think there's loads of different possibilities for this island. And I'm really excited to see all of the different featured hubs that people are gonna make in the community. Also another thing worth noting in chapter two is that they removed the block from the BR island. So these featured hubs are very much designed to be the replacement for the block. So instead of being being able to design your own POI on the BR island, you can now design your very own creative hub, which will be seen by everyone who loads into Fortnite Creative and also Playgrounds mode. This is a huge opportunity to have your work seen by millions of players in game, and I think it's a really great addition. Moving on to some of the other features that were added, we now have template islands that you can choose from. If you're not very good at mechanics or you just need a little bit of help when you start your levels, there are these new template islands which you can load up, and basically they have a bunch of mechanics and game settings already built into the island so all you have to do is go in and actually add the decorations to the level. We have a bunch of these right out the bag that were made by some of the creators that were invited to Epic Games. So we have Jess Grand's Zone Wars tutorial. Basically this is like a map that will show you how to set up your own Zone Wars maps. We have the Hub Template tutorial which is the one that I just showed you made by Maka Makes. We also have a Battle Royale Island that is like 
set up straight out the box. All you need to do is go around and add your own POIs and buildings to it. We also have the Cosmodrome Showcase, which was made by Gurchinov. We also have the Escape Map Tutorial made by MacJack. If you guys are just starting out in creative or you want to learn a lot more about creative mode, this is one that I would recommend for you. It goes over absolutely everything you need to know about creative, a lot of the mechanics and loads of different tips and tricks. So I really recommend that you go out and actually check this one out by Mac Jack. Uh, she did an absolutely amazing job with this, so make sure that you go check that out. It's also worth noting, guys, that you can choose to support these creators who have made these template islands for you, and I think that's a really great way to give back to these people because they put a lot of time and effort into making these for you guys. So I really recommend that if you're going to use one of these template islands, that you hit that supporter creator button and you give back to these creators. The last of these is the Space Island Showcase made by Jishui. She's an absolute beast when it comes to like decorating and doing terrain and stuff like that. So if you guys want to learn more about how to make custom terrain and just really how to get better at decorating then I really recommend that you check these islands out especially this one made by Jishui and apart from that guys that's basically all of the template islands that were added in this update in terms of new starter islands that are just completely blank that were added we have the new shoreline island which is absolutely massive like this is the biggest map that Fortnite has ever added to creative and it's definitely going to be a staple of all of my builds in the future as you can see it's this gigantic flat grassland area and it tapers off into the brand new water mechanics that were added as part of chapter 2 season 1 and it's just really great looking island with these sandy beaches all the way around the outside and I love the fact that you can even go in the water and swim around like I said guys I think this one might be my new default island that I build on I just love the way that it looks with the sandy beaches and the access to the water and it's just absolutely massive so you, there's like no space concerns when it comes to actually building your islands. So let's take a look at some of the prefabs and galleries that were added as part of this update. There's four main prefabs, there's the Haunted Mansion, there's the brand new Haunted Manor, the Haunted Observatory and the Haunted Homestead. These are all creative exclusive props and I don't think that you find these anywhere else apart from in creative right now. I love the way that these prefabs look and it's an absolutely amazing addition and it's an amazing addition just in time for Halloween. I love the way that all of these interiors look. I think this is like a style that we've definitely been missing. These suits of armor are absolutely amazing. We have candlesticks that like cast light and stuff like that. And just this art style in general is going to go a long way in creating spooky atmospheres for your haunted Halloween maps and stuff like that. I love the way that this old building looks with all of the plastered stuff that's just coming off the wall. Epic did a great job on the design of these buildings and I think we're going to see a lot of people using these new prefabs, especially with Halloween right around the corner. Moving on to some of the galleries that were added. we. Have have the haunted wall gallery, we have the haunted floor and stair gallery, the haunted roof gallery, the haunted prop gallery, we have the variant foliage gallery, and we have the variant rock gallery. If you guys have been subscribed to me for a long time, you'll know that the one thing that I love doing the most is creating my own custom landscapes and trying to create my own custom terrain and making it look as realistic as possible. So when I was over at Epic and I saw these brand new galleries with these super cool looking trees and all of this new look foliage that was added for chapter 2 season 1. I absolutely lost my mind and I went crazy with all of these rocks and trees to create some crazy looking landscapes. These new rock textures combined with the new lighting make everything look and feel completely brand new. It really does feel like Fortnite 2 and it completely changes the look and feel of this game. I think I've said it a lot of times but I'm really excited for the future of Fortnite. It's absolutely insane. All of these things that they're changing. Obviously with Chapter 2 I think everyone is super excited about the new BR Island, the addition of boats. The ability to swim and fish and stuff like that. I'm really excited to see where creative heads in the next few months. And I can't wait to see all of the crazy creations that people come up with in the future. Moving on to some of the new devices that were added, we have this brand new lock device. So basically the way that the lock device works is that you attach it to any wall surface that has a door on it. So once you have it attached to the wall, it will go blue to say that it's active. You can then change things like the initial door position where you can set it to be closed. You can change like the appearance of it, like the color and the visibility of it in game. You can also say whether or not the door starts locked and you can set this device up so that it unlocks, locks, opens and closes the door when receiving from certain channels and receivers. So to get my door to work, I'm just going to set up a basic trigger system with a channel 1 trigger on this side of the door and then I'm going to set up a channel 2 trigger on the other side of the door. 
All right, guys, so if we walk up to this door, you can see that it's red at the moment and we can't open it because it says it's locked. But if you remember, we set it up so that it will unlock and open the door when receiving from channel one. So if we walk over this trigger, you can see that the door opens automatically. I didn't even need to interact with it. And then what we can do is when we walk on to channel two on the other side, it should close the door and lock the door. So as you can see, the door swings shut behind us and it says that it's locked and we can't open it. I think there's going to be lots of different possibilities for this device in game and all of the different gameplay aspects that people can use this for, especially for different game modes where maybe you want people to have a certain score and then when they reach a certain score, a door will unlock. Anything like that, I think it's going to be absolutely amazing for. The next new device that was added was the brand new conditional button. You can use this conditional button to check whether or not a player is carrying a certain item. And if the player is carrying a certain item, then it can transmit on a channel. So the most obvious thing that someone can use this for is to pair it with the new lock device and basically have a door that can be unlocked if you're carrying a certain item. So some of the things that you can set up on this device are some basic team options. You can change some of the cosmetic options, including color, the text that shows up, and the display icon. So if we set our conditional button to transmit on channel one when it's activated, then we can pair it up to this door that we have working over here. To set the item that you want this conditional lock to look for, all you need to do is go into your inventory, pick out a random item, then go over to the play menu and drop out the fish. So as you can see, now we have a locked door that is looking for a fish and it only needs one of these fish to be able to open this door. So if we move this over here, it keeps the same settings and I'll remove this channel one trigger that we had before. So if we take a look at this in game, all I need to do is open the chest, claim my fish. Then all I need to do is walk up to this lock. It'll look for my fish. It'll take my fish from my inventory and in return, it should unlock the door. So as you can see, it took out my fish. It showed a blue tick to say that it worked and that it passed it onto channel one. The door then unlocked and we can walk through. So that's basically a really simple way of combining the conditional button and the lock device in your games. So they were basically just some of the main things that were added in chapter two, season one. Uh, there were a couple of smaller changes to existing devices. The most notable of these is they increased the number of channels that you can have again. This time it's gone from 50 to 75 channels. That's absolutely huge. Huge. Honestly, at this point, if you need any more triggers, you're absolutely insane. Um, I don't think I'll be hitting that limit anytime soon, but I do know that there's many of you out there who have been crying out for loads more channels for quite a long time. So maybe this will allow us to unlock some bigger and more complex game modes in the future. So it'll be exciting to see what people come up with in the future. Another major change slash bug fix that was added in this version is now that the class selector will now update when activated by a trigger without having players have to leave the volume first and then walk back into the volume to be able to activate the class selector changing. This is huge for a bunch of different game modes and it will just help make game modes a lot more automated without forcing the player to have to do anything or go out of their way to leave a volume before having to re-enter it. Another small thing that they changed was the number of times that that annoying phone will pop up in the bottom left hand side of your corner. It will still pop up, unfortunately there's no way to disable it right now I don't think, but at least they have decreased the number of times that it pops up and tells you that you can leave your island or do stuff like that. But for now at least it's showing up a lot less frequently than it did before. They also made a couple of changes to the UI when interacting with portals. These all have a much bigger preview window than before and the images are a lot clearer to see. So there are all of the major changes that got added in chapter 2 season 1. The biggest and most exciting thing that got added was this new featured hub. This one was designed by my good friend Maka Makes. The six of us who got invited down to Epic Games all made our own hubs and they will be coming in a few weeks time. I think basically the plan was to rotate a new featured hub in every week. So you guys will be seeing the hub that I designed and created in the future. I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone for supporting me and watching my YouTube videos. Without you guys, I would never have been invited to go to Epic Games and to be invited to all of these exciting opportunities. So I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you for supporting me up to this point and I'm really excited to see the things that we can do in chapter two. If you guys haven't redeemed the battle pass yet, make sure that you use someone's supporter creator code. It really helps smaller content creators continue doing what they love. It doesn't matter whose code you use, just make sure that you have a code entered when you purchase the battle pass and don't let that go to waste. That being said guys, if you did enjoy today's video and you did find it helpful and informative, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.